Hello and welcome back to the Genesis Designs and Model Craft bench and look what we have here. A little present I bought myself for my birthday. Uh, the Hong Kong Models 148 scale Avro Lancaster. So obviously the Tamiya kit's been around for many many years and I do in fact own one. Uh, it's I think it's fair to say the model kit I've owned for the longest out of all the kits I have in the stash since it was bought in around about 1988 and I still have it um, and it's fair to say that it's one of those kits that I I built one as a child um, and hung it up in my bedroom and the second one i.e. the one that I still have was one of those that was put to one side for a day when I felt I could do it justice I'm sure we're all familiar with that concept um, I, in the meantime I've built another one I built one for a client a few years ago now uh, which had everything thrown at it and the result was quite satisfying but my goodness was it a lot of work yes anyhow here is then this latest one from Hong Kong models which is kind of a scale down of their 30 second kit but with some changes so let's have a quick look through it now uh, and this is initial box opening so everything is still in its packets a lid off there we go construction booklet very large um, and very thick paper we'll have another a better look at that in a minute and look at the way it's uh, presented all the parts in their own bags so what I'm going to do now I'll go off camera and I'll take some of the or most all the parts out of their bags so that we're not crinkling and messing around for ages in between talking so bear with me right then right in the bottom of the box you get this nice little print of the box art you can see it's got some slight uh, relief in it from where it's been sat on by the sprues but it's a nice touch nonetheless poster for your wall or oh, you could obviously frame it if you felt so inclined so here we have then main fuselage halves extensively ribbed on the inside as you can see here and these are both they're packaged separately they're not on a sprue, they've already been removed and it's that kind that uh, joins on the mating face so there's no there's no scarring to the outside of the part which you often get when they uh, helpfully take things off the sprue for you but clearly it's not going to fit together nicely without getting those cleaned up so there's your, your main fuselage halves and straight away the surface detail is quite striking to me so the Tamiya kit had raised rivets and raised panel lines which is not it's not a terrible thing for the Lancaster the Lancaster did have raised rivets although raised panel lines are a fallacy no matter what but this has recessed panel lines and hopefully this will focus in nicely but also recessed rivets but they're very very fine uh, and the overall result is a really pleasingly busy appearance and not only that one which will be far easier to restore after cleaning up the joint lines than on the older kit another nice feature that's straight away noticeable is this is very sturdy molded in sort of tongue and bracket assembly to fit the wings onto um, the wingspan of this model of the 48th Ancaster is quite large and consequently without some form of bracing it, it, there's a lot of stress on the joint as you can see that just pushes on and slides back into place this this I think is not going to need glue I mean these wing halves aren't glued together so it's not holding together as well as you'd like but yeah that's that's a really nice touch if 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 one could leave the wings off until painting is complete on a model like this it is a massive massive boost because it, it's difficult to get into everything like the in the inboard sides of the nacelles and things like that in the area around the sort of fuselage where the inner nacelle is it's difficult to get in there for painting for weathering for anything at all so being able to fit the wings afterwards is a huge boost um, back to the surface detail and again this is all recessed but there are raised rivets as well in various places and again I'll, I'll hold that still enough for the camera to focus you can see that's some really really nice surface detail 
that perhaps looks a little like it there isn't any wrinkled surface that is just shadows from the molding process uh, here on the control surface on the aileron the um, <laughs> the servo tab is not there okay you've got the actuator but the scribings for it are not there these are very over scale as are the rib tapes here and then on the underside they've neglected to put any surface detail at all so that's something that's going to need looking at oh, oh made a mess another point to note then on the wings okay on the inside internally molded sort of spars uh, helps to keep keep this from being too flexible but also note the locating pin arrangement how you've got pins and you've got built up holes so that when you place the parts together you've, you've got quite a lot of thickness there and they support it throughout the whole length of the wing so it's, when it's glued together going to be quite a sturdy assembly and isn't going to be squashable so another nice touch I like that very very much separate navigation lights obviously and interestingly the top panel of the nacelle is moulded in so that completely removes the chance of a horrible joint at the leading edge which is another nice touch and the size of the model is clearly demonstrated by my hands it is quite a large model when done not stupid big not unmanageable I don't think but it is not by any means small all right let's have a quick canter through the sprues and we've got two of sprue M this is clearly under carriage and engines you do get four Merlin engines in this kit and pull that out of the way because that's complicating the view obviously they are not going to be super detailed Merlin engines but if I come in closer you can see they're actually really quite nice they have flats molded into the main wheel tires which is good a couple of spinners there and then large undercarriage legs which are moulded in one piece again this is a nice touch because these can be quite heavy models especially if you start adding a bit of brass and a bit of resin so good sturdy undercarriage legs is a major benefit and being moulded all in one piece like this does help with that sprue F this is just engine nacelles uh, wing structure moulded into the inboards as it should be no internal detail though uh, this is obviously the main undercarriage bay uh, that could probably do with a bit of help note that the nacelle panels have an ascribing from the inside to allow them to be easy to remove should you wish to display the engines at all but they have a nice smooth appearance from the outside and one of the things with the Tamiya kit which was a real bear was getting these nacelles to look nice the fit of, uh, of the nacelles was really it was difficult um, these look like they're going to be okay we'll see um, undercarriage doors here next up sprue H tail planes fins and flaps you are able to to build this model with the flaps in the lowered position should you wish to the detail is not fantastic but it is an option again the tower planes have this internal spar arrangement and the the depth is set by by that and the locating pin so again they won't be squishable the fins are one piece which is quite nice and again you've got that lovely surface detail throughout very very finely done very crisp really really good looking as you can see from that the, the elevators have been molded with quite a for me this is the kind of fabric impression I like to see so we're moving on to some smaller parts here on, on the sprues and there is quite a lot of internal detail represented on this kit this is the forward part of the cockpit or the flight deck this is the pedestal where the pilot sits and you can see here we've got the representation of the cover over the main spar where that goes through the fuselage on the real thing um, there's various radio sets and boxes and dials 
scattered about on all these parts. There are also engine to cell parts in here as well. All of it is moulded with that same sort of finesse that you see on the surface detail of the motor parts. Here we've got the Bombay roof. Um, more engine to cell parts. This is going to be for the structure for the main undercarriage uh, bays. The firewalls for each of the four engines. Another part, more parts that show to portray the spar covers on the insides and here we've got rudder pedals, more radio sets, some vents and the main instrument panel there and then in the cell fronts for each of the engines here. This isn't the best I've seen detail wise but it's not too bad and again unlike the Tamiya kit there are, there are no uh, ejection pin marks in all of this detail which is basically impossible to remove. There are a couple here but they're quite easy to get rid of. Bombay doors got their own little sprue again they're one piece of that internal ridge is moulded in couple of eject pin marks there but they're quite light and will be easy to get rid of. So the last of the smaller sprues and here we've got turret parts for the most for the most part. That's obviously the fairing for the mid upper there. This is the bucket, the lower part of the mid upper, got front turret parts there. There's a blanking plate for the mid upper should you, should you decide to model an aircraft which didn't have one fitted and I assume, one should never assume of course, but I assume there'll be a, a dam buster or a grand slam version coming at some point. There's the uh, 303 machine guns there, a couple of aerials. Again it's all, I think that's the back of the pilot's seat, it's all very nicely moulded, the detail is good it's crisp, it's clean, it's ev everything you'd expect of a, of a modern kit to be honest. Ordnance wise, don't get a massive amount. What's that? Six thousand pounders they look like and a cookie. That's the extent of four thousand pounders, that's the extent of the, the armament that comes with it. There are various aftermarket sets out there already that cover armaments for Lancasters if you want extras or we can obviously raid the spares box propeller blades are the needle type not the paddle blade again those can be robbed out of another kit uh, the, the modern um, release of the Tamiya kit has got both types in it and I do have some spares from that these are the uh, oil cooler or the radiator outlet flaps uh, and the lower parts for the nacelles so the last part plastic wise then is the transparency sprue and it is quite a big one. Here we go. It comes in um in its own plastic bag with this cardboard backing which is a nice touch. You can see it better over there. And then these parts where they sort of are high have got some sort of rubbery sellotape across them to further protect them from being scratched although they haven't done that with the main canopy which might have been a nice thing to do. The frames are quite subtle, they're not big fat high ones and they have fastening detail on them too. And then your fuselage windows are in the strip form just as they are on the Tammy kit but this is a nice, very nice set of transparencies. lovely shine on them no real distortion they're, they're very nice indeed and I do like this idea of packaging them on a sheet of card that's very good moving on to the instructions then very sturdy booklet quite large as well apparently Created in cooperation with AK Interactive and Large Scale Modeler, the website. And the drawings, as you can see, are of this sort of 3D render CAD style. And I think it's easy to see the, uh, the amount of internal detail that's included when you look at these pictures. You see here you've essentially got 
full length of the fuselage you've got things going on is it gun turrets there it's a bomb bay six bombs and a cookie you've got a uh, optional h2s ray dome there the beam approach landing system aerials the landing lamps bomb bay doors can be open or closed Nice sturdy mountings for the tail planes as well, big round pegs. We'll see if they can be fitted after paint as well. Merlin engines, propellers, nacelles. Built up into a, a, a creditable representation. As I say, it's not super detailed, but it is decently detailed. Will be enough for many modellers, I think. And there you are, fitting the wings right at the very end, complete with all their engines. And a lovely card rendered view of the complete model at the end there. Then you've got a couple of pages of port layout diagrams. The decal sheet represented there. There is a small photo etch sheet, which I'll show you in a second. And then the colour scheme options that are included with the kit. So we have included we um, Admiral Prune, 106 Squadron RF Syaston in 1942. And the extremely famous S for Sugar, R5868, RF Waddington, May 1944. And this aircraft is still with us she's at the royal air force hendon museum still in these colors and well worth a visit now you've got stencil location and then a paint guide which covers ak interactive tamiya and guns or mr hobby colors required for the build decal sheet itself or sheets is here glossy very thin and minimal decal film which when you're working with things that are mostly black is useful very nice indeed and you've got your nose out there and your bomb tallies for, for s sugar and as i said small etched fret it's just some seat belts and some minor sort of gun turret details there a couple of fold up parts for some boxes but it's nice to have it included I've already purchased a separate decal sheet because I didn't honestly fancy either of the options given in the kit uh, I've got this Kits World or Warbirds Kits at War um, for Thumper 617 Squadron or should I choose to Thumper being replicated by the City of Lincoln Battle of Britain and Royal Flight Lancaster, which might be interesting from a, a finishing point of view. But this is a small sheet and only includes the codes. I've effectively only really bought it for the nose art because the codes are so big that it'd be very easy to cut my own anyway, and I probably will. So I've already picked up that for it. So there you go, the price of this kit in the UK. Uh, retail price is around £120, which is fairly substantial, but not much more than the Tamiya one. And in actual fact, it, it's easily available for around the £100 mark in various uh, from various retailers. This kit was purchased from modelsforsale.com. Vince did me a good deal on it, uh, as he always does, and I'm very grateful for that. Um, I am I do intend to build this uh, relatively soon probably towards the sort of back end of this year make a start on this um, and obviously I'll bring you a series on it when I do uh, once I've finished a few projects that I've got going on and need to get done first so there you go it looks very impressive I like it and um, the little delay before I can build it is a good thing because it gives Edward time to bring their photo etch out especially for the flaps um, and possibly a few other details. I think uh, Master 
brass gun barrels are an absolute must uh, and potentially if there were say a brass and engine set that would be very nice too but we'll see we'll see what comes along anyway i hope that helps any anyone who's thinking about buying this it's a very significant upgrade over the old tamiya kit in terms of surface finish should be a bit of an easier build as well because in fairness there are areas of that older kit which are difficult this should be easier we'll see um but yeah i, I think it looks good uh, and and can be recommended i reckon for the price that it's at so there you go so until next time then look after yourselves look after each other and genesis out